Yeah, I like presenting in ballrooms like this because it kind of feels like a very weird wedding. <laughs> uh, my name is Anthony Scuderi. I am the co-founder of a company called Gridspace. Uh, we are an artificial intelligence company that focuses on analyzing long-form human-to-human conversational speech. And what I want to talk about this morning are the atomic elements of conversational speech, the fundamental units of which it's constructed that we focus on analyzing and automating around. We primarily operate in the call center environment, uh, but we also look at long-form conversations of all form. Conversations are really interesting uh, because um, there are a lot of things that make conversations very special and a lot of reasons that we still use conversational speech even in a world of email and texting. Uh, it has a lot of uh, very unique properties. Uh, we have dedicated parts of our brain dedicated just to speech generation and processing. Uh, we still use it today because it's fast, it's innate, it's layered, it's synchronous, and it's dense in meaning. And that's what makes speech very interesting to us. If you look at the cuneiform tablets in Sumeria, the, one of the earliest forms of writing, the first things that they wrote down were transactional pieces of information, sales, debts, uh, harvests. And I want to make the argument today that all speech is transactional. Uh, and I don't just mean necessarily uh, financial transactions, but anytime you say anything, there's a purpose behind why you said that, or at least hopefully. And uh, the, the goal here is to understand every time we're, and when, we're, when we're looking at a conversation, whether we're analyzing it in analytics or we're trying to automate it, there's a purpose behind what we are saying and what, and what is being said to us. And uh, I want to look at the kind of fundamental units of these transactions that make up full conversations. Uh, so a, a simple transaction, you know, one person has something and another person has something and they exchange it. Uh, in a conversational context, in a call center, a caller might have something uh, that they need, an agent has it, and then they reach a conclusion. In a more complex scenario, both sides have information that they need from the other, and only when they all have exchanged what they needed is, uh, can the call reach some sort of resolution. Uh, I want to look at the taxonomy, the kind of fundamental uh, types of animals that you see in a conversation. These are called dialogue acts. Uh, that make up this kind of zoo of, of fundamental dialogue uh, components that form a conversation between people. Here's the ones that we recognize in a conversation when we're analyzing it or when we are participating in it in the form of autonomy. Thank um, okay, you for calling Layton Insurance. How can I help you? <laughs> Have a good day. It looks like you're all set up. Is there anything else I can help you with today? Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry, Mr. Jones, but we are not the West End. We're actually hotels worldwide. I'm so sorry to hear that, sir. May I have your name? One, two, four, eight. Oh, okay. Yep, hold you right up here, and I see that. Did you call it in, or did you use the, uh, email, the online service? Check in. Okay, um, we have a room with two uh, queen beds available. Will that suit you? So this is a conversation being analyzed live in our analytics product, SIFT. When we're trying to figure out what the purpose of each dialogue act is, and oftentimes multiple purposes per sentence, uh, you have to look both at a small context and at the context of the conversation as a whole to figure out why someone is saying what they're saying, what the purpose of it is, what the subtext is. You also have to look very closely at every word and the way the word is said, both the semantics and the prosodics uh, of what they're saying. If you want to be able to piece together why is this conversation happening, how is it going, is it reaching a resolution, what are the goals of both speakers, uh, are promises being made, are questions being asked, are answers being given? Uh, in addition to the kind of more mechanistic black and white aspects of uh, these speech transactions, one of the things that make conversational speech different than text or chat is that 
there's a lot of emotion conveyed that add a lot of color to the conversation. And a large amount of the information that we exchange when we talk is in how we say things and not just what we say. Um, humans evolved emotion in a social context, and a large amount of the reasons that we express emotion, even though it's an internal state, is that we, it's a form of social communication that is actually about half of the information in conversational speech. And if you want to understand what something means, and a lot of times when people are calling call centers, they have a lot of emotions, uh, you need to understand this just as much as you need to understand the kind of more clinical transactional parts of the conversation. And so we do a lot of work using multimodal neural networks where we're looking at both what is being said and how it's being said, intonation, tone, prosody. Um, I'm gonna play you a couple examples of those in, in, in a moment as well of the emotions that we are having our neural networks recognize here. And uh, you can see, just listen to the tone and the this frequency. This was not my mistake, but I am being punished for it. Will there be a fee or a penalty or anything like that? The other car slammed into me out of nowhere. Then it just drove off. This is the first time I've ever made this mistake. We've been on the phone so long, I feel like I should invite you to my wedding. <laughs> I just got into medical school. Oh, I am so glad to hear that. Look, I work way above your pay grade. There were a lot of happy memories in that house. Yeah, my hobby is paying late fees. <laughs> oh, wow, that's great news. So my point here is that there's multiple simultaneous channels or streams of information in every conversation. There's the tone, the subtext, the context, as well as the meanings, the entities, the tasks that need to be fulfilled, and then the underlying meaning of each sentence. And only when you have these building blocks as they flow through your call center or through your conversation can you really start to distill and understand a conversation uh, in its entirety. And that's what we uh, build models to do. It's what we build tools to do. And when these, once you start understanding these building blocks and kind of can understand a conversation uh, in a distilled transactional form, you can begin to build analytics and begin to build automation that takes advantage of these building blocks and allows you to compute on them, begin to build systems that are emotive and responsive and that understand the complex transactional structure of a conversation in the call center environment. Um, we look at trends over time and very complex templates of types of calls down to things that occur in one in a million call types. Uh, we look at uh, the trends and emotions and the, uh, and, and the correlations between, for instance, when prices are brought up angrily, there's a 15% reduction in satisfaction. Or when someone shows empathy, there's a 20% growth in satisfaction or resolution. And if you want to look at these sort of very complex, emotive, and uh, semantic flows through a conversation, you need to understand that. Now, call centers are, in a way, the uh, mechanization or industrialization of conversational commercial speech. And as uh, we have millions of Americans and, and many more millions worldwide working in call centers, it is the industrialization of speech that is responsible part in part for the growth of the commercial enterprise. And what I want to show you is an example of the industrialization of that industrialization. Um, I'm going to show you something that not many people have seen. Uh, it's our work on dialogue systems taking these fundamental building blocks and building a autonomous call center agent named Grace. Uh, yes, last night I was entertaining some clients and I think I left my wallet at the restaurant and to be safe, I want to replace my debit card. Mm -hmm. Before I can help you with that, I'll have to authenticate you, okay? Okay. May I ask who I'm talking with first and last name, please? My name is Chris Johnson. Mm -hmm. And what was the name of your first pet? Um, for 
Professor Sparkles. Okay, great. That's Professor Sparkles. All right, let me check that information you gave me. Okay, Mr. Johnson, just checking your name. Looking through your security questions. Professor Sparkles. Oh my God, that's precious. Oh, he was precious. Okay, I just submitted your request. All right, thank you, Mr. Johnson. You are authenticated. Okay, should I go ahead and submit that request for your new debit card? Yes. Just seeing how long that'll take. Okay, so I expedited that brand new car day. I also went ahead and waived a normal fee for you. Oh, thank you. It should arrive in three business days, sir. Great. Is there anything else I can do for you? Yeah, I should probably make sure no money was stolen from my old card. Can you tell me my checking account balance? Mm -hmm. Okay, Mr. Johnson, I'm going to look up that checking balance for you. Okay, bringing up your checking account. Okay. All right, Mr. Johnson. I see here that your checking account balance is $37.35. Okay, Can I help you with anything else? Uh, I would like to try $10,000 from my savings to my... Would you like help with something else? Yes, I would like to transfer $1,000 from my savings to my checking account. I'd be happy to make that transfer, Mr. Johnson. Thank you. Just to confirm, you want me to move $1,000 from your savings to your checking? Yes. Right? Yes. All right, Mr. Johnson. I'm initiating that transfer. Okay, Mr. Johnson, I submitted that. It should go through in three to five business days. Thank you. Would you like help with something else? No, that does it. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Okay, sir, have a great day. You too. Goodbye. It wasn't great, Grace, great. Um, so in that conversation, you saw probably a dozen or so transactions, all featuring those building blocks that we talked about, en entities, uh, meaning, emotional content, uh, and, uh, and, and a lot of fundamental dialogue acts. And flowing through the system, uh, first, you know, you're hitting speech recognition, recognizing the words that are said, then a dialogue system or the bot, and then, then our speech synthesis model. Uh, and then that goes through the internet, through phones, through the, through the air, through sound waves into the brain, and then back out through the vocal track, all the way back to our speech recognition. This is a very complex nonlinear system where there are going to be errors in every step of this process. And understanding the conversation, conversation holistically and understanding these fundamental atoms that make up a dialogue is absolutely essential to both being able to handle the kind of unpredictability and nonlinearity of the call and to handle this transaction uh, in a way that is uh, task-oriented and reaches a fundamental conclusion. So um, uh, we talked here today about uh, the fundamental elements that build up conversations. This is what we spend our time on, understanding semantics, understanding speech, uh, emotion, and vocal quality. Um, if you'd like to see some of this stuff demonstrated, come visit us at Booth 100 later in this uh, conference. Uh, but I hope also that when you, when you talk and when, you, when you're working in the call center or you're working in call center analytics uh, or conversational speech analytics, you think about these kind of fundamental building blocks. Make sure that you understand what is the purpose behind uh, any, anything that someone says. There's always a reason that someone said something, oftentimes multiple reasons, and oftentimes it's buried in the subtext or buried in the emotional content. And so um, thank you, everybody. Uh, and. Um, We'll see you guys uh, later in the conference. Have a good rest of your day.